Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We serve indeed a wonderful God. From time of old, we have heard of the crucifixion of Christ. And people have celebrated this on a given day. During the month, sometimes it falls in March, sometimes it falls in April. The Church of Christ, whenever we partake of the Lord's Supper, it signifies the relationship that you and I have with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It tells of the profound love that Christ has for us. How he came here, emptied himself of his divine attribute, and came in the form of a man <clears throat> to be able to be tempted and tested and tried, to be able to eat the same food and feel hunger and thirst. So he can stand and argue on our behalf, according to Hebrews chapter is 4, from verse 14 through to 16, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was tempted and tested in all points, yet he remained without sin. And so this morning... It is not self that I am declaring unto you. This morning, I ask you to permit me to journey with me. So you'll be able to understand the God whom we serve, the reason we are here. Did you know that for life to come from something, it has to die first. If you are going to plant a, 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 a mango tree, that mango tree died um, 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 sprung from a dead mango seed. Any seed that is going to germinate and bring forth fruit, it has to die first. And those who have studied plants and, and, and fauna and flora, those who have, the scientists who have studied all of these things and, and Darwin and all of these, they got it right, it died first. And so we have terminologies of how it germinates and life comes forth from something that is dead. If you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 11. I want to show you how God can suspend uh, 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 dead, that God can delay uh, uh, um, his time to, 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 to bring life to something. <clears throat> In John chapter 10, I'm sorry, John, St. John chapter 11, in St. John Chapter 11. And I'm going to be coming from. Let me read from. Let me read from verse 1. Now a certain man was sick. Lazarus of Bethany. Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha, and it was that Mary who was anointed, 
who anointed sorry the Lord with fragment oil and wiped his feet with our hair whose brother Lazarus was sick therefore the sisters sent to him sisters sent to him saying Lord behold he whom you love is sick and when Jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through him now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus so when he heard that he was sick he stayed two more days in the place where he was then after this he said to his disciple let us go to Judah and the disciples said to him rabbi lately the Jews sought to stone you are you going there again and Jesus answered are there not 12 hours in the day if anyone walks in the day he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world but if one walks in the night he stumbles because the light is not in him these things he said and after that he said to them our friend Lazarus sleeps but I go that I may wake him up then his disciples said Lord if he sleeps he will get well however Jesus spoke of his death but they thought that he was speaking about taking a rest in sleep then Jesus said to them plainly Lazarus is dead and I am glad for your sake that I was not there that you may believe nevertheless let us go <clears throat> to him there, there are a number of things that are happening here let me try to simplify it it, 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 um, <clears throat> it may be a lot to take in Jesus is trying to teach them is divine nature because by now the Holy Spirit after the baptism of Christ is being anointed and everything that Christ does is because of the Holy Spirit and the Father that give it, gives him the ability to do that which he does you have to understand that when a seed is dead and it is put in the ground I don't know about you or what happens, but whenever the earth touches it, there is something miraculous that is happening because a tree will sprout forth of the same nature of lightning of that seed. And when it comes up, it is fresh and strong. And when it, it grows to maturity, it bears fruit and it gives fruit to all the people who like that fruit. It could be a apple fruit. It could be a nesberry fruit. It could be a kiwi fruit. But it has to come from a seed that is dead. And that seed has to go into the ground. And you wonder, how can something that is dead bring forth fruit? And the scientific way is that it germinates and it, it springs and it grows. But it is something far superior to that Jesus Christ knowing the ability and know what he wants to teach the apostles because there are many people even in the church today do not believe that they are going to get up again they do not believe that there's going to be a resurrection and you need to understand this is the same contention that um, the Apostle Paul had in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 while he had to explain to, him, to them that we are going to be changed from mortal to immortality. One day you and I are going to get up because Jesus Christ has the power. He has arrested death. He has the power to, to bring forth Lazarus. He deliberately delayed going to Lazarus to show them what is going to happen to them on the day when Jesus Christ returns? Brethren and friends, there is life 
into death. There is life in death. I don't know your concept of what your concept of death is, but there is life into death. And that's what Jesus Christ is teaching the apostles. There is life into death. Whenever I see a seed and I observe the seed, and I always thought, how can a seed that is dead bring forth life? Isn't that amazing? How can something that is lifeless comes to life? And I know the scientists and those who have, 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 have studied it, um, 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 they, they said, well, this is what happened. It, it, it germinates and it brings forth a sprout. It brings forth uh, branches. It brings forth roots. And that root goes into the ground and get nutrients from the ground and it starts to grow. But before all of that happened, it was dead. It was there. What is it? Who is it that gives this dead thing the ability to spring forth branches? Who is it that gives this dead thing? And I'm not talking about us yet. Just look at the reality. This is a reality. The scientists can see the seed. What is it? That makes it germinate. That gives it that power to grow. And so I'm here to tell you this morning that we are not just mere human beings. We are superior to being in the flesh. Well, I talked about before um, the God that is in you, the spirit that is in you. That when God said, let us make man God God made the trees and everything, but when it came out to man, God looked to himself. God up, looked to himself and said, let us make man in our own image. That all of us that stands here, that sit in the pews, has God's DNA within that body. You have God's DNA within your body. But I don't want to stray from the point this morning. And I'm going to make two points and the message will be yours. That whether you like it or believe it or not, you are going to get up one morning. You're going to be raised again. Because the Bible said every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Whatever you believe it or not, you are going to get up one morning. You see, the seed that is dead, this plant, has no intelligence of knowing that it's going to spring forth fruit. Or spring forth branches. And bring forth roots. But when it goes into the ground, God gives it the ability to Germinate and bring forth what? Roots and branches. And I'm saying to you and I that life is in death. And you should not think that when you die, your life is over. It is not over. Because one day when the trump of God sung, the Bible said the dead in Christ is going to rise Again, now listen to this. It went on to say that when Jesus, when Jesus <clears throat> got where he was going, listen to the conversation in verse 17 of John chapter 11. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. By this time, by this time, his flesh is decaying. Uh, he said, now Bethany 
was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the woman around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatsoever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. You see, Jesus is having a conversation with Martha. And Jesus said, your brother will rise again. But she still didn't understand what Jesus was saying because she was she thought she, she, she was thinking of the resurrection the resurrection not now but the resurrection in the resurrection that Jesus Christ spoke about in the last days and Martha said to him I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last days Jesus said to her I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me though he may die he shall live and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die do you believe this now let me pause for a little while and let me address verse 23 he said whosoever believes in me this believe does not just mean yes i believe that jesus christ exists this belief means when jesus says that you need to come unto me all ye that are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. This belief means I need you to take up your cross and what? And follow me. This belief means you need to be obedient to Jesus Christ unto death. This means I'm going to serve you, and I'm going to serve you until I say it is finished. I'm going to serve you until this body get whole. This belief means I'm going to walk and talk with Jesus. This belief means I'm going to pray to him. I'm going to honor him and I'm going to glorify him. This is what this belief means. Because this belief will signify that you are one of his. And on the last day when the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 6, from verse 13 through the 6, that the dead in Christ shall what? Rise first means that those who are obedient to Jesus Christ are going to hear when he hear his first trumpet when he calls. This belief means that when Paul speaks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that the dead in Christ are going to rise. I mean, those who are in Christ are going to be changed from mortal to immortality. We are going to put on a new body. That's what this belief means. And so she said to him, verse 27, she said to him, Lord, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, and to wish I come into the world. And she went on to have a conversation with Jesus Christ. And verse 27 said, verse 33 said, Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with, with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? Where have you laid him? Martha thought that everything was over when she met Jesus. Everything was over. And she went on to have a conversation said, Jesus he said, by this time he is now smelling. Uh, verse 39, you there with me? Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, Martha, the sister of him, who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, 
for he has been dead four years. She's having a conversation with Jesus Christ. Have you ever met somebody? You are having a conversation with Jesus Christ. And, and so she's having a conversation with Jesus Christ. And this conversation, she's reasoning from a spirit, a, a, a physical perspective. But Jesus is reasoning from what? A spiritual perspective. She is reasoning from an earthly um, vision. She's re re reasoning from an earthly um, experiment. She's reasoning from an earthly, uh, um, um, earthly way. And Jesus said to her, did I say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. There are some things when it comes on to Jesus Christ, brethren and friends, that, that, that you can't fathom and you can't understand. So I will understand that the atheists and the agnostics, they don't believe that there's going to be a resurrection. You know why? Because they are reasoning from Martha's standpoint. Are you with me? They are reasoning according to what they have seen. They are reasoning according to um, um, what or for God allowed them to, uh, to, to see. And so, Church of Christ, we need to understand the way how God sees things. Then they took away the stone, listen to this brethren, from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, and they may believe that you said me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot, with, grave, with the grave cloths. And his voice was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Now back in the day when I was a child, back in the day when I was a child, we used to be told a whole lot of ghost stories. And it would get us scared and afraid. He would get us scared and afraid. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though he was dead, yet shall he live. Let me put this together quickly. The dead seed, we are able to experience the dead seed because throughout our lifetime, for those of you who of you have ever done any planting, I don't know if you ever plant anything, we just put it in the earth and it what? It grows. And we understand this. And maybe we have not ever even Talk about it. This seed is dead, but yet still God allows it to grow. Okay, let me you take out God out of it. Yet still nature allows it to what? To grow. Bring forth what? Fruit. So we are able to eat. But when the seed goes into the ground, it was what? dead, but yet still nature allows life to what? To come from it. We believe it because we have what? Seen it for our, ourselves. And over a period of time it has become a knowledge to our database in our cranium. 
We believe this because we test it through seeing, we test it through feelings, we test it through our senses and our capacity to understand that, yes, this is real. The seed went into the ground when it was dead, and then what? Life comes from it. This is undeniable because I am per perceiving this. It's undeniable. I cannot deny the essence of what is happening because when I put that dead seed, I'm doing this for redundancy, for you to understand how God is alive and well. No man can do what that seed is doing. Every man on this earth who has invented stuff and created stuff took it from a matter and we manipulate that matter for it to even tires or cars. We manipulate it, the, the, the thing so that we can, it can, it, we can get it running. So we can wear the clothes. But we never took anything out of no tin here and make it. We can't do that. But this seed that is dead brings forth life. And I'm saying to you, this morning, I'm saying to you that God is going to bring us back, whether you be an atheist, an agnostic, or a Christian. You know why? Because no matter, even the, the seed, the dead seed is not intelligent. It has no reasoning ability. So it can has, it has no concept. But God put whatever he does into that seed for it to what? To come forth. It can't stop it. What God has done to it, it can prevent itself from what? Growing. And so likewise, even if you refuse to, Refuse to believe that you are going to get up again. God is going to raise you on the last day. God is going to raise me on the last day. Because it is not within your will and power for you to get up. It is in God's will. And God's power. So when God on that day. Break the clouds of heaven. Sound the trumpets. And the dead in Christ shall rise. The Bible said everybody is going to get up. And everybody is going to change. And he's going to judge us. According to the deeds which have been done in this body. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And verse 8. The Bible said that when you die. The body can't hold back the spirit. The Bible said about this, the body can't retain the spirit. The spirit goes back to God who gives it. Because it is God who is in control. God is not finished with us yet. And we are just, this world is not our home. We are just a passing through. And so once we believe in Jesus Christ, the Bible said in Mark 16 and verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. There is a spiritual operation that goes on in the watery grave of baptism. And the Bible says it's upon that premise by hearing and believing and repenting and confessing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you have been born again. Christ by you back from the pits of hell and you have been translated in his loving kingdom. According to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 3. We will get up again. Whether you believe it or not, the Bible said every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. I wish I had more time. But on the cross of Calvary, oh, the grave splits and death came forth. And those who were crucified him stood at him and said, Truly, truly, it is the Son of God. 
It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Almighty God. But I need you to understand this, that there is a life in death. There is a life in death. Why don't we stand and sing the invitation song? <coughs>